Server-side request forgery is a growing issue and something we definitely need to be on the lookout for when pen testing or during our bug bounty adventures. Today, we'll look at how we can verify blind SSRF using out-of-bands techniques. And once you verify the vulnerability, you can use the same technique to demonstrate an impact such as data exfiltration. As usual, we'll have a quick recap and then a hands-on lab. And even though I'll be using Bub Suite Professional for the lab, I'll show you an easy open source alternative you can also use. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. If you already know how to find and exploit basic SSRF, then feel free to skip ahead. But otherwise, let's do a quick recap. Server-side request forgery occurs when a server makes requests to an unintended destination on behalf of the attacker, in this case, us. This usually happens because it's taking a URL, failing to adequately verify it, and then making requests to that destination. So if we have an application that makes calls to lots of different API endpoints to check the stock of an item, for example, we might be able to modify the URL it calls so that it sends requests to an internal resource that we don't have direct access to. If you want to see a walkthrough of a simple SSRF lab, then check out the video that's on screen now. Otherwise, let's crack on and take a look at out-of-band techniques. So we need to use out-of-band interactions to help us pull off blind SSRF. In a typical SSRF attack, the response of the request is returned directly back to us so that we can see it. However, sometimes the response is sent elsewhere or handled by the application in a way so that it returns just a generic message such as OK or maybe not returned at all. So to verify that the target application is making requests on our behalf when we can't see the response, we can try making requests to an endpoint that we control, like a web server. And simply, if our payload is successful, we should be able to see the incoming request from the target application. Let's take a look at a hands-on example to demonstrate this. So here, we have an application that's vulnerable to blind SSRF. And this can be tricky to detect and exploit since we have no idea what's actually happening in the back end. But of course, there are some techniques that we can use to find this, such as fuzzing, or if we have access to the source code or developers, which is quite common during a pen test. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm just going to switch on my proxy and then I'm going to refresh the page. Make sure that we have some traffic flowing under proxy HTTP history. Looks like we're all good. And then clear this history. And all we're going to do is come down and select a product that we like the look of. I'm going to go with the Cheshire Cat Grin. And then when we come to the page, we can see that there's nothing really obvious on this page. And on the previous labs, if you watch the video, we actually had a button that would check the stock and then it would return the amount of stock. So of course we could see the response of that request. But here we don't get anything. So let's come to our proxy and take a look. And we have this request. So product ID equals 15. So this must be the Cheshire Cat Grin. And we can come in and take a look. So what I'm going to do first is send this to repeater with control R, or you can right click and send to repeater. Come to the repeater, and then I'm just going to send an initial request. So next, we want to actually take a look at this request and have a look to see where there are URLs. So something that is kind of a giveaway for SSRF is often a URL or partial URL in the body or as a parameter or in the query. But here we can actually see that we have one in the referrer header. So all we're going to do is take this out, right click, and then insert collaborator payload. And this probably won't work yet because we don't have HTTP. So let's do HTTP colon slash slash. And I'm adding this because we want to keep the format of the previous URL. It might work with or without. We may need to test both. And then all I'm going to do is click send. Now, after a minute or so, we can come to the collaborator and we can come to poll now and we can see that we actually have requests coming to our collaborator server. So this is indeed verifying our SSRF vulnerability and we probably need to do a little bit more work to understand the impact of this vulnerability and start putting together a report. Now, it's important to remember that sometimes you will find SSRF but you may not be able to exploit it. 
And my advice for this situation is that if you're on a pen test, I would still flag this in the report and say, hey, we weren't able to actually exploit this, but in the future, this may become a problem. And during your bug bounty assessment, just know that if you're actually unable to exploit something, your report might be rejected. So it's always important to take that next step and actually demonstrate an impact of this vulnerability if we can. Now, if you want to do this without Burp Collaborator, we can use something like webhook.site. So if I just come back to Firefox and open webhook.site and click enter, here you see that it gives us a unique URL that we can send traffic to and then inspect the request. So if I just copy this and pull up my terminal and just send a quick curl request, you can see that the request is here and we can inspect it and we can see things like the query strings and we could see the body as well. So for example, if we did dash x post dash t, hello there, and hit enter, you can see this post request coming in and you can see the body as well. So we can use this to demonstrate blind SSRF and also start to exfiltrate data. Although, of course, if you're on a pen test or something and you're exfiltrating like sensitive information from a client, then it's likely that you don't want to use a third party application like this because you'll be passing your client's data to this kind of unknown third party but it's simple enough to spin up a server you control and achieve the same thing if you're in that situation. But for bug bounty and things like that, this is very good for verifying a vulnerability and doing a bit of testing. But like I say, just be careful about leaking sensitive information. So really SSRF is definitely something to keep an eye out for during your testing. And with modern applications, it's actually becoming an increasing issue. So I definitely recommend you add it to your checklist whether you're on a pen test or just doing bug bounty. And if you want to take this technique and go even further, there's a great lab on Portswigger Academy that lets you exploit Shellshock via blind SSRF. So I definitely recommend you take what you've learned today and go and give that lab a try. And finally, if you want to see how to set up a free EC2 web server to catch requests like webhook.site does, then let me know in the comments below and we'll try and cover this in a future video. So that's it for today. And once again, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you enjoy this kind of content, let me know in the comments below. You can also catch us on live stream every Tuesday. We dedicate the first part of this to answering as many questions as we can before diving into hacking web apps and CTF challenges. The VODs are also available in the live tab here on YouTube as well. Catch you next time.